Bonjour. Dobry dzień. Welcome to Weekly with Olivier Vidrin is this nice new studio. I am Olivier Vidrin. Uh, we will spend together 20 minutes uh, to discuss what's happened in Ukraine and in the world. Trump open to shift on Russia sanctions. What does that mean? <sighs> this is not a good news for, uh, for Ukraine and uh, for Europe. Why? Because, as you know, uh, USA was a big support uh, for Ukraine uh, uh, in those sanctions against Russia. If tomorrow uh, Donald Trump will stop the sanctions against Russia, what Europe will do? You know that we have between Europe and USA a big interest, economical one. And uh, if to tomorrow, next month, uh, USA will stop the sanctions against Russia, EU maybe will not continue the sanctions against Russia. What does that mean? That means we will be very weak in Ukraine. But also, that means maybe that Europe has to be more strong. Yes, if uh, USA will stop the sanctions against Russia, this is now to Europe to continue to help Ukraine, and it's now to Europe to continue to help alone Ukraine. Because with uh, Donald Trump's new administration, Europe is alone, and Europe must continue the sanctions against Russia, despite what will do uh, US. And EU has to continue to help Ukraine. But really, the impact of this declaration of Donald Trump uh, about the uh, sanctions against Russia is a very uh, bad news. I want to talk also about the second point, very important, you know, that uh, maybe you know that uh, some newspaper, uh, German one, Bild and the newspaper of uh, UK, The Times, they did an interview of Donald Trump. And really, everybody was shocked. Why? Because Donald Trump declared a lot of very, very interesting, can I say, ideas uh, about Europe. Really. First of all, he is not really pro-European and he, for him, Europe is a, a competitor against the US. Can you imagine that? Second time, he, he wants to do some pro pro protectionism. For example, he said that uh, in the US you have a lot of Mercedes and German cars and you want to do, to increase some tax for those cars who come from Germany. This is the beginning of a new pro protectionism. And also, he say that he will help UK to be successful in the Brexit. And he said also that other state members of the European Union will also leave the European Union. Really, this president of USA, new president, is very different from the former one. He is not really pro-European. And the result is what? The result is that Europe must take his destiny in his own hands. We are alone now in the European Union and we have to take care about our destiny. We have not to wait something about USA, about another country, we have to take care about our destiny. And that's the big, I can say, the big consequence of the Donald Trump declaration in those newspapers, The Times and Build. Uh, we have to take care of the European. And when I speak about the European, I speak also about Ukraine, because Ukraine is Europe. Ukraine and all the European, we have to take care about our destiny. We are alone, but we are European and we are strong if we will be together. I want to speak also about another thing, very important. Uh, in Brussels, 
in Strasbourg, excuse me, in, in Strasbourg, we had the, we hadn't, we have, we have, but we had elections and we have a new president uh, for the European Parliament. Is Italian. Uh, his name is Antonio Tajani. Uh, the election not, was not easy. This man is, uh, how can I say, pragmatic and very conservative. But anyway, we have a new president uh, in, uh, the, for the European Parliament. You know that the former president was uh, Mr. Schulz. Uh, Mr. Schulz was uh, German and uh, he left uh, the uh, European Parliament because he wanted to go to uh, some uh, political uh, career or uh, some uh, political job in Germany. But Schulz was really, really very active. He was charismatic and he did a lot for the European Union, he did a lot for Ukraine and now we are waiting uh, we are waiting something uh, new with this uh, new president. But you know that uh, what's happened is very interesting. I say to you, we have a new president in uh, USA. We have a new president for the European Parliament. We will have a new president in France. We will have election in Germany. Everything is changing in Europe and in the world. The former presidents of USA, of the European Parliament, we know already what they did for, to support Ukraine. But now we will have to deal with new politicians in Europe and in USA. As I said in some former uh, recordings, 2017 will be a very interesting year, but also a very dangerous year for Europe, for Ukraine and for the European Union. Now, I want to, this is like a tribute. Uh, I want to speak about the last conference of the President Obama. You know the impact, the big emotion uh, with this last press conference. Yes, the President Obama uh, did this last press conference and as his uh, farewell speech, that was really, really good. And that was really the speech of a president and also of a man. And uh, the President Obama said that he thinks that everything will be okay. He asked us to be optimistic and he repeated that also we have to be involved uh, in, uh, to fight for our values in USA uh, and all around the world. But the last uh, words of the President Obama during this press conference was to uh, be optimistic and uh, he said that for him he think that everything will be okay. I hope Mr. President Obama that everything will be okay because uh, you were a, gr a great president and I hope you, the new one uh, will do a good job as uh, you did Mr. President Obama and that's, that was my tribute uh, uh, for the President Obama. I am very happy now to receive for the second part of my program my guest, Rainer Ruge, German-Austrian political scientist and former EU Council of Minister Official. I am very happy to receive today my guest, Rainer Ruge, German-Austrian political scientist and former EU Council Official. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet, meet you, you. Heine. Very nice. Thank then you know Ukraine well, very well. Yes. And you are a friend of Ukraine. Yes. You, you are retired from the EU Council. Yes. 
but you did also a lot of uh, mission for OSCE. Yes. And um, and we will talk uh, together about about Ukraine, about Europe. Uh, but I am very happy to receive you. Yes, thank you very much for your invitation. Then we were together on Maiden. Yes. We were together in the It was a times. wonderful time, yes, together. <laughs> and I will start with, uh, <laughs> with this time. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember? Uh, I remember. Yes. <laughs> How did you witness Maidan events, personally? Um, act actually, I must say, I came not f uh, at the very beginning, in December. I came just around New Year mm -hmm. to be here with my friends. And they told me that things are... Uh, heating up, there's something going on on the Maidan, and I should come and look. And I understood that this is a um, special situation, that people were uh, unhappy about the political uh, situation and they wanted a change, and a change for Europe. So, Yes, and uh, <laughs> I remember because I met you in January uh, yes. with, uh, with, uh, with uh, other friends. and but. We were uh, we were uh, expecting during Maidan a lot of change and a lot of reforms and all yes. that. And you personally, uh, are you satisfi satisfied about the result, about the reform, about what 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 is going on uh, between Europe and, uh, and Ukraine? I'm a little bit um, have mixed feelings because when you were there in Maidan, as we were, and you saw people really. Um, risking their lives and sacrificing for the country, you expect then that the whole country, the whole people would um, rise up and not only do away with Yanukovych regime, but they would really implement a new government, a democratic one, which uh, would uh, help to uh, make reforms. I mean, I, it's difficult because we need uh, support from the West. Yes, and, and this is more difficult now yes. because of uh, Donald Trump in the yes. USA and yes. Putin in Russia and uh, Europe is, I can say, a little bit alone. Yes, it, it takes um, now three years after Maidan. Um, I must say reforms were underway and there were some reformers um, like um, also Sakashvili in the uh, Oblast, but let's but, but not I, I, go I, I too far. I, I, yes. want, I want to know yes. your opinion about what you advise the Ukrainian to do to overcome the enduring political stalemate. I, I have, what is your I have uh, two uh, recommendations. One is, of course, um, to um, uh, strengthen this anti-corruption office and to do really strict reforms and harsh uh, judgments with a, a justice system which could uh, judge those who have been perpetrators and should uh, go, to, uh, go to prison. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing, the anti-corruption and uh, really show to the people that something uh, will be decided and those, this is one. And the other thing, uh, short idea is uh, to bring back uh, young people, Ukrainians, who went abroad, yeah. qualified people, to bring them back in the country to, to change um, business, to change um, all sectors of uh, social life. Uh, so they should take responsibility and tr attract them uh, to come back to work for That's Ukraine. That's why we have to be optimistic. When you see yes. the young students, the, this generation between 20 and 30 years old, they really are with the European mind yes. or Canadian mind, Western mind. Euro Maidan people. Yeah. And yeah. really those, those young generation, they will change Ukraine. This is my opinion. That's yes. why I'm optimistic. Yes. But on the other way, you know, that uh, we, 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 um, we talked a lot about uh, the strategy of Ukraine to go to Europe yes. and sometimes we know that Ukraine want to go to Europe, but sometimes they don't understand what the Europeans are waiting for. And this is very problem of, um, I can say, a dialogue between sometimes officials from Europe and officials from Ukraine. And for you, how, how the country could move closer to Europe? What, 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 what you, how? You have to fascinate the people. It's not only bureaucrats who decide about Europe. It's the, the people of Ukraine, um, they must feel that they're part of Europe. So um, it's the task of the government to create this European spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also of the task to keep the promises from the European side. 
let's say this visa freedom. Yes, this visa, you know, yes. for me, visa I, freedom. I am waiting this visa also. What yeah. are you thinking about that? I know that um, at the Spring Council, uh, end of uh, March, usually uh, such things will be decided. I heard that on the 15th of um, March, the Dutch government will ratify this association agreement, mm -hmm. probably. So if this hurdle Can you is repeat? This is very interesting the for 15th a of, of March. So if this hurdle is taken, mm -hmm. then probably it was usually the 25th of March, there is a Spring Council, and it could be, uh, Poroshenko said um, in Davos, it's a matter of few weeks. So it could be really in, in April or May. So April, May, people would have the chance with their passport to go for a limited time to travel to Europe. But they have to show maybe insurance. Then in spring, uh, they will have the visa free regime. Yes. Okay. That, for that's a, a good short news. time, yeah. And now we will talk about the drama, yes. Donbass conflict. What do you think about the Donbass conflict and are there any chance to resolve it and how to resolve it? Uh, when I worked for the Council of the European Union, at the time I was in conflict resolution mm -hmm. and how uh, civilian crisis management is about how to um, settle a conflict. We have this um, Minsk format, uh, but it hardly works because to both sides are not moving. So it can become a frozen conflict, which is maybe already protected protracted or frozen conflict are difficult to decide when there's no momentum for each side to make concessions. Do you think that concessions. Donbass can be like a new Gaza uh, territory? I, I a hope, frozen conflict, yeah. I, I, I hope that um, there will be some momentum from Trump's side. He said he will do something about this conflict. And the Germans also... I. I hope that there will be some brokering of a conflict. I was there in Severodonetsk mm -hmm. just uh, last winter to deliver humanitarian aid with ICM, mm -hmm. a French NGO. Mm -hmm. And I saw myself how people live and how they are, uh, it's a dire yeah. uh, times and the soldiers and everything. I, I'm very much aware of this situation in, in the field. Very and times. you 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 spoke about Saakashvili, and I want to speak about Saakashvili and Klitschko effort in the context of the reform. How you evaluate the, the, those results? I mean, you remember that um, Udar mm -hmm. at the Maidan was a strong yeah. party, mm -hmm. but then uh, when Klitschko came on the scene, he was booed out, and sh they should leave the scene. Yeah, yeah, you so, remember. but then he became mayor, and he's a strong boxer. He's a a strategic uh, person who can make a change for the city. I saw new roads here in Kiev. Uh, if we speak about Saakashvili, I asked people in Odessa what did he do in this short time. And what? He said, uh, he, uh, driver said, he, uh, 30 years we're talking about the highway to Ismailov. Now he did this. We have a highway, Odessa, Ismailov. And the young people in the administration in different um, districts of, of Odessa Oblast. So um, there is a hope that a new generation of new people can drive on these reforms. And um, That's why I think we need more to communicate on what's also... We have some results about the reform. And, uh, I, I, and the results about those reforms are with the young generation. Yes. That's, that's very good. I mean, they have to take good. also responsibility uh, for their country. It's not that the um, old generation has to do all. Uh, there should be new politicians, uh, there must be reform of parliament because it's one of the... Uh, the parliamentarians here in Ukraine are one of the best paid in the world, or the richest in the world. This was the recently... The, the, the MPA? Yeah. The best, so, the yeah, best. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they're rich, but uh, what is their interest to change the country? If they sit on a lot of money, mm -hmm. they have no interest in this. Yeah, <laughs> but in Germany and in France, they are not very rich, you know, to be a, to be an MP is not, is not no, a good... It's uh, more transparent, yeah, they are rich people, transparent, yeah. uh, also in our countries, but... I want... Uh, this is, that will be my last question. What do you like about Ukraine? Because I know that you, you are a fan about Ukraine. What do you like about Ukraine and what are your projections about Ukraine for the future? Um, you see... I like to eat good, I like the good <laughs> Ukrainian I food. I was in your birthday party. <laughs> I, must, I must be honest. <laughs> so I like the lifestyle, I like uh, the Ukrainian soul. 
I, I like um, this position that Ukraine has between East and West. It can be a bridge, it's a nice word, uh, bridge function. Mm -hmm. uh, also for the future, I mean, Ukraine has to realize that it lives next to a big neighbor. Mm -hmm. This is very clear. Mm -hmm. um, geopolitics are like this. Mm -hmm. I'm Austrian German, small Austria lives next to big Germany. Mm -hmm. Small Belgium lives next to big France. Mm -hmm. And small, uh, no, relatively small Ukraine to big Russia. Mm -hmm. So as a pol geopolitician, I say it's also a chance for the future. Don't destroy all the links that you had from the past, mm -hmm. even though they are uh, hurtful and it was under occupation. But I, am, I think a freedom, uh, free country must take its own responsibility and I hope, wish and, and all may, the best. May, maybe maybe yeah. Ukraine has to show the road to Europe, yes. to Russia. Exactly. This is Ukraine can be an example. I, I, I heard this uh, bon mot from Mr. Shitsov, the ambassador of Russia in, uh, to the EU in Brussels. Mm -hmm. He said, let's see, first um, at the time, uh, Romania and Bulgaria should be integrated. We see how the EU is managing this. Then Ukraine, it's like at the footsteps already of our empire. And then we will think I Russia. Hope one day, I hope one day all Europe be, will be united. Yes. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much, Heiner. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very, very much. much. See you soon. Thank you very much. Thank See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed those 20 minutes together in this nice new studio and wonderful studio of Real TV. See you next Sunday. Goodbye, do bobacinia. And remember, never give up.